Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is Module 7, Lesson 5, Systems of Inequalities. After this lesson, you need to be able to solve systems of linear inequalities by graphing. Let's learn. Solving systems of inequalities by graphing. Back in Module 6, we learned about graphing inequalities, but we only did one at a time. Essentially, as a recap, we graphed a line, decided what type of boundary it had, either a dashed line or a solid line, and then we shaded above or below to show where the solution set was. With a system of inequalities, it is two or more inequalities using the same variables on the same grid. And the solution for systems of inequalities is going to be where the two graphs overlap. So any coordinate that satisfies both inequalities at the same time will work. And just like inequalities regularly, there are many more solutions than in equations. So as we're going through this, we're going to be looking for the area where both inequalities overlap, and that will be our solution set. Example one, solve by graphing. Solve the system of inequalities by graphing. We have x minus 2y is greater than negative 6, and y is less than 3x. We can see in the picture here, we are given a graph. One is shaded yellow, looking like it's shaded below, and a dashed line. And the other line, another dashed line, is shaded to the right or shaded below and it was blue. And then it made this overlapping area, which is green. How we're going to do this, we're going to graph one inequality at a time, but we're gonna do both of them on the same plane. So first we have x minus two y is greater than negative six. The boundary is dashed. Remember I can tell because there is no line underneath it. It's just a regular greater than or less than sign. And because it's dashed, it is not included in the solution. Then we would shade it below the boundary to show where the solutions are. Remember, you can tell if you're shading above or below by choosing a test point such as 0, 0. 0 minus 0 would be 0. Is 0 greater than negative 6? Yes. So that would be the area that you count. For the other inequality, it is also dashed. And also, it is not included. Though this time, if we choose a test point, let's choose 1, 1 to see where it's shaded. 1, 1. So this would be 3. Is 3 greater than 1? Yes that area would also be included, so we shaded where our test point was. Our solution set then is going to be this entire area where those two things intersect. It's the double shaded region, which is what I'm gonna keep calling it from now on. Here we can see that region is green. It's overlapping yellow and blue. What this means is any point that is in the green is a solution. So no matter where it is, if it's in the green, it works for both inequalities. If it's in the yellow, then it works for the yellow, but it doesn't work for both, it's not a solution. If it's in the blue, but not the yellow, it doesn't work for both, it's not a solution. And then if it was in the uncolored region, definitely doesn't work, it doesn't work for either. So if you're asked what is part of the solution set, you need to look for the area that's double shaded and see if your points fall in that area. Check your understanding, graph the system of inequalities. Pause the video now and complete the check. Let's check. First, we have one third x plus two is less than y. So this is sort of written pretty much in slope intercept form. So my y intercept is two and my slope one third. So I'm gonna go up one over three each time. I can see that my line should be dashed based on my inequality symbol. And let's decide where we're gonna shade. If I plug in zero, that's gone. And this is zero is two less than zero. So zero, zero right there. Two is not less than zero. That's false, so it can't be that. So shading must be up here. Then I have x is greater than or equal to negative three. So x is negative three, which is right here. Greater than or equal to tells me I have a solid line. Try to make that a little darker. I have a solid line and I want x to be greater than negative three. So if I were to plug in zero for x, is that greater? Yes. So it would be everything over to the right. Where's my double shaded area? It is up here where everything is above one line and to the right of the other. So that double shaded area is where all your solutions would be. Example two, solve by graphing, no solution. Solve the system by graphing. So again, we're gonna graph both of our systems. Negative three X plus four Y is greater than zero. It's dashed, so we would not include it. Three X minus four Y is greater than or equal to eight is solid. So anything that was on those lines would be included. But if we look at our graph, 
we can see when we graph it, there are no areas that overlap. Nothing intersects. This would mean that the system has no solution. There's nowhere on this graph that will be in both areas at the same time. And again, that's what we're looking for, that double shaded area. So since there's no place that exists, it has no solution. Check your understanding. Graph this system of inequalities. For this one, if you want to attempt to use Desmos, feel free to do so, as that is how I am going to show you when we check the answer. Pause the video now and complete the check. Let's check using Desmos. In Desmos, I have my two inequalities typed in. We can see Desmos is helpful because, again, it graphs it for us and it shows us what kind of boundary line we need to use. So I have x plus 3 is less than y, the green shaded area here, and 3x minus 3y is greater than or equal to 12. That is the purple shade here. We can zoom out and, yes, the lines are getting closer and closer, but there is no place where they ever will cross over and double shade. So this would be another one that has no solution. Example three, apply systems of inequalities. Our real context here is sewing. A family and consumer science class is making pillows and blankets to donate to a local shelter. The class has 40 yards of fabric to use. Pillows require 1.25 yards of fabric and take one hour to make. Blankets use four yards of fabric and take 2.5 hours to make. The class has 28 hours of class time left for the semester. Determine the number of pillows and blankets the class can make for the shelter. So reading through here, we have two things we're really talking about, the yards of fabric and the hours or the time for the class. So let's define some stuff. First for our variables, P, we can be the number of pillows. Logical, starts with the same letter. So B must be the number of blankets. Again, starts with the same letter. In inequalities, we have constraints where we can't go past certain things. Here, they only have a certain amount of fabric to use, and they only have a certain amount of time left. So fabric and time would be the constraints. There are limits to what they can do. So because pillows take 1.25 yards of fabric and blankets use four, then we would write an inequality that looks like this. It's 1.25 per pillow and four for each blanket, but there's only 40 yards they can use. So the blankets and the pillows have to be less than 40, but they could also be equal to 40 if they somehow manage to get it perfectly. As for our time constraint, pillows take one hour while blankets take two and a half. So since the class only has 28 hours left, one for a pillow and two and a half for a blanket has to be less than or equal to 28. So we can see here in our inequalities, this is talking about fabric, this is talking about fabric, this is talking about fabric. For our other one, this is a one here, this is talking about time, this is time, and this is time. The numbers that represent the same thing usually are paired together. Now let's solve and interpret what this means. So if we graph the solution, and we could use Desmos to do so, here they graphed it for us. We can see the green again is our double shaded area. That represents any possible combination of blankets and pillows that fit both constraints. So they used an appropriate amount of fabric and they used less than 28 hours. As we're going through any point in here works. However, because of the context here, we have to make sure we're using whole numbers of pillows and whole numbers of blankets. So really anything that would fall on these grid lines would be a viable solution because those are whole numbers of each. So one, for example, would be four and 15, which would be right there. That would mean that four blankets and 15 pillows were made. Here we have five and six, so five blankets and six pillows. Here we had one and 15. Again, anything in the green would work. Whereas if it was in the yellow or in the blue, those would not work. If it falls on the boundary, be careful. It has to fall on the boundary of the double shaded. So let's say, for example, that this point right here was a whole number of pillows. That would work because it's on the boundary of the green. Whereas if it was like here, on that boundary, it would not work because yes, it's on the boundary of yellow, but it is not on the boundary of blue and it's not in both, it doesn't work. Check your understanding, read through the situation and select the correct system and graph. The system that's shown is the graph that is right below it. So you do not have to pick one and then choose a different graph. Whatever the system is, pick the graph below it. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have picked C. R plus M is less than or equal to 20, and 7R plus 8.5M is greater than or equal to 150. So let's piece this together. She can work up to 20. 
So less than 20 is good, not more than that. This is hours. So let's find more things about hours. They don't specify, but she can work during the early morning or she can work during her regular hours most of the time. Our second constraint is money. She wants to earn at least 150. So 150 at the lowest, probably more than that. This is dealing with money. So we're dealing with money and we're dealing with money. Seven is for the regular hours. 8.5 is for the morning. Has to be more than or equal to 150. And regular plus morning hours have to be less than or equal to 20. Now that we've determined that our answer was C, here is the graph. Identify each solution as viable or non-viable. So do they work or do they not work? Pause the video now and complete the rest of this check. Check your answer again. Here we can see which ones are viable or not viable. The only viable area is this green, the double shade up here. Not a very large area to fall into. So 217 would be up here, that's good. Four, seven down here, not good. Five would be about here. 15, so 12, 14, 15, that would be right there, that's good. Eight, 13, so here's eight. 13 would be right there. In the blue, barely above, so no. 10 and 10 would be right there, that's okay. It's in the green, barely. We could double check using Desmos where we can zoom in farther. 18 and six, here's 18, here's six. That is definitely in the blue. And then 21 and six, definitely in the blue. So we have three possible viable solutions that fit in that double shaded area.